Thank you everyone for being here for Berkeley City College 2023 commencement. Please take your seats as we welcome our interim chancellor, Dr. Jeanette Jackson. Good morning everyone. Can I get everyone who can to please stand? Please stand including the graduates. And I, this is a momentous occasion, but I also want it to be fun. So we're gonna give you just some few short comments, but I'd like for you to shake it out, get it out of your system, give it a roar, raise your hands, stomp your feet. All right, okay. So I'm gonna start with just a few comments, so please be seated. Thank you for indulging me a little bit. So greetings, my name is Dr. Jeanette Jackson as was announced, many of them call me Dr. J. And I am the interim chancellor for the Peralta Community College District. I wanna thank you for the opportunity to address the graduates of 2023. In the current dialogue about student education and discourse and achievement, we hear the words sprinkled into our dialect, such as equity, access, student success, and academic excellence. At a recent trustee convention, 
The keynote speaker was Pedro Nuguera, who spoke about this. Just a little background about Dr. Nuguera. He is a New York native who earned his PhD in sociology from the University of California, Berkeley, where we are right now. And he sat in those seats that you are sitting in right now. He's a former classroom teacher. He held a tenured faculty appointment at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. He was lured from Harvard to teach at New York University or NYU. And recently, he moved to the West Coast to accept a position at UCLA as a distinguished professor of education in the Graduate School of Education and Information Sciences. I recently began reading one of his books titled Excellence Through Equity. In the book, he and co-author Alan Blankenstein speak about equity. Archbishop Desmond Tutu wrote the foreword to that book. And in the former Archbishop Tutu, who passed away, unfortunately, <clears throat> used the South African term Ubuntu. And I have used that as I speak to you today. Ubuntu literally means I am because you are. Think about that. I am because you are. The South African philosophy was also used by Nelson Mandela, who later became the first elected president of South Africa. The term Ubuntu was essential in the transition of power from a segregated South Africa to a democracy, long before many of you were even born. But you need to know history. Archbishop Tutu states, we didn't struggle to change the complexion of those who sit in the union building, and you can substitute that with the White House for the union building. We struggled to change the quality of our community and society. I say this to you, those of you who are graduating, you are our future. Do not struggle to change the complexion of those who are elected to represent us. I challenge you to fight to change the quality of our community and our society. On this special day, I say congratulations. Continue to learn and grow. It is never, ever too late. And today, you have taken the first step on the road to your future success. Good luck. And again, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Graduates and guests, please join me in welcoming our college president, Dr. Angelica Garcia. Thank you. Buenos dias. Good morning and welcome to the Berkeley City College commencement for the class of 2023. Yes. <laughs> Graduates, please take a moment to look around this amazing hall and acknowledge your family, loved ones, friends, biggest supporters. I am truly overjoyed when I look around, um, when I saw you lining up outside, being in this space to see your smiles, your tears, and the sense of accomplishment that fills this space today. I would like to thank Interim Chancellor, Dr. Jeanette Jackson, for her inspiring welcome remarks. And um, I want to take a moment to acknowledge special guests and dignitaries who are sharing the stage with me today. To my left are members of the Peralta Community College District Board of Trustees. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Diana Delphine Polk, President of the Board of Trustees. The Honorable Louis Quinlan, Vice President of the Board of Trustees. And the Honorable Bill Withrow, Member of the Trustees. I also welcome Dr. Stephanie Droker, Interim Deputy Chancellor. 
Uh, to my right, I would like to introduce, you've already met, Dr. Stacy Shears, Vice President of Student Services. <laughs> Ms. Cooney Hay, Vice President of Instruction. And Mr. Sean Brooks, Vice President of Administrative Services. I also want to bring your attention, graduates, to the faculty and classified professionals that join me. If I could ask faculty and classified professionals to please stand. Yes, yes. Clap for them, they're still grading your final exams, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I would also like to express my deepest gratitude to BCC's 2023 Commencement Committee co-chairs, John Wynn and Susan Trong, <laughs> along with committee members Christine Trowbridge, Denalyn Maliari, Gail Pendleton, Wei Hyun, Jasmine Sumandal, Kiara Allen, Michael Alviar, Dr. Stacy Shears, Tom Rizza, and Vanessa Phillip, and all the other colegas who joined this morning to make this day possible. <laughs> the Associated Students of Berkeley City College chose the theme of hope for commencement. For the past three years, our community has been impacted by a global health pandemic, racial unrest, and the impact of these experiences on our lives. Amidst the unknown, many of us held on to hope, hope that our loved ones would not fall victim to COVID-19, loss of employment, or violence against our communities. At BCC, we held hope that we could reconfigure the learning experience in an equitable and inclusive manner, hope to provide services that could meet the needs of the community reeling from these new external pressures, and hope to one day host a commencement ceremony where we could all gather in person to celebrate your accomplishments. <clears throat> I would like to highlight the scholarship and work of Dr. Jeff Duncan Andrade. He's a professor at San Francisco State University, an East Bay native, and an educator trained here at UC Berkeley. Dr. Duncan Andrade wrote an essay for the Harvard Educational Review titled, Note to Educators, Hope Required When Growing Roses in Concrete. In his essay, he describes critical hope as one that is the enemy of hopelessness. He quotes Dr. Cornell West in that critical hope demands a committed and active struggle against the evidence in order to change the deadly tides of wealth inequality group xenophobia, and personal despair. He identifies three elements of critical hope, material hope, Socratic hope, and audacious hope. Material hope refers to the skills and tools that you have learned to navigate the complexities of society and institutional forms of oppression that impact our communities. It refers to the quality teaching and services that educators have provided for you all to successfully deal with the forces that impact our lives, often found in the lessons in the classroom, your laboratories, the resource center, the library, special programs, or even just in the atrium. Duncan Andrade states that Socratic hope requires both teachers and students to painfully examine our lives and actions within an unjust society and to share the sensibility that pain may pave the way to justice. In his research, effective educators teach Socratic hope by teaching the righteous indignation in young people as a strength rather than something deserving a punishment. Socratic sensibility is uh, the understanding of both Socrates' statement um, that the unexamined life is not worth living and Malcolm X's extension that the unexamined life is painful. Graduates, I trust that your educational experience at BCC included these levels of examination and that will fuel your actions to engage and right an unjust society. You have been trained to engage in this critical thought and discord in the hopes that your brilliance, that your actions, will in fact advance our society. 
Another scholar, Dr. Sean Jenright, describes this example of solidarity as an essential ingredient for radical healing. The past three years have been filled with opportunities and challenges to heal ourselves as individuals and as a community at Berkeley City College. I hope that your time at BCC has provided you with experiences that Dr. Angela Valenzuela calls authentic care, where you are seen holistically, all of who you are, your strengths, your challenges, your aspirations. Graduates, you are an example of how hope, especially critical hope, is necessary in our democratic society. In closing, today you join thousands of college graduates across the country who will become the future of our society by actively living out critical hope and radical healing. Your hard work, commitment to learning and your goals, and with the support of your community, you are in this moment right now filled with hope for your future. This year, Berkeley City College will confer 962 degrees and certificates to 551 graduates. Whether you are the first in your family to graduate from college or you're earning a certificate, an associate degree, an associate degree for transfer or transferring to a four-year institution, remember that you pulled from the depths of your being to remain hopeful for a brighter future. But most importantly, savor today. Lock in the sights, the sounds and emotions that fill you with the hope that is yet to come. And now it is my pleasure to welcome and introduce you again to Peralta Community College District Trustee and Board President, the Honorable Diana Delphine Polk. Good morning. I'm a little short. <laughs> Welcome to the Berkeley City College graduation ceremony. My name is Diana Delphine Polk. I am the president of the Peralta Community College District Board of Trustees. I'm also a third generation Latina and a community college graduate. I'm <laughs> just like all of you today. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be giving comments to you all this morning um, on behalf of our board. Um, a quick thank you to Dr. Uh, Jeanette Jackson, our chancellor. Dr. Angelica Garcia, our wonderful faculty and staff who have gotten us all here today. We could not have done it without all of you. So, thank you very much. 14 years ago, I graduated from UC Berkeley in this very auditorium. So it's incredibly special to be a part of this ceremony, to be here to celebrate your accomplishments. I sat in the very place you are now, literally, filled with the hope and possibility that my future held. I graduated from community college in a small farming town in the Central Valley and began my academic career here at UC Berkeley as a transfer student. I'm very proud to be a product of the community college system and it laid the foundation for me to pursue my goals, which was to get my AA degree, transfer to a four-year university, earn a master's degree, and someday run for elected office, all of which I was able to accomplish. And it was because of mentorship of hard work, my teachers, staff, and my family truly committed to helping me through my community college journey successfully. I ran for this seat to represent all of you with the perspective of someone who's been right where you are today, knowing that my community college foundation is the reason that I'm here. The theme of this year's graduation ceremony is hope, as many of you have heard through our wonderful um, speakers before. And I really love this theme because it is the perfect way to describe how I feel seeing all of you here. Filled with hope, uh, because it is a per yes, the perfect way to describe how I feel seeing all of you here. I'm filled with hope that you will go out into the world and do great things. After three years of a global pandemic, so much uncertainty, we're all here in person to celebrate together. I know it wasn't easy spending hours studying, writing papers, doing lab work and problem sets. Many of you hold jobs and have family responsibilities, all that in the midst of COVID-19. The commitment that you all have to your education, the resilience 
The determination and the tenacity that all of you demonstrate by making it to the finish line today is truly inspiring. I'm so proud of all of you, and as you leave our school to start the next chapter of your lives, I hope that you remember to be persistent, to dream big, and to never give up. Thank you so much, and felicidades. Thank you for your kind words, um, President Delphine Polk. It is now my pleasure to invite Berkeley City College librarian Jenny Yap to come forward and provide remarks on behalf of the Academic Senate. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So everybody, come have a seat. <laughs> come on in. My name is Jenny Yap, and I'm a librarian and faculty member at Berkeley City College. And it's honestly really strange to be here speaking on behalf of the faculty, the teachers at Berkeley City College. Because when I was a senior in high school, I was talking to my teacher, Mrs. Peel, about how I was gonna go to college and major in business. And Mrs. Peel was kind of old school and she always wore her glasses on the end of her nose and she looked at me and said, I don't see you as a business person. I really think you're gonna be a teacher. And I laughed in her face. And I said, yeah, right, that's the last thing I wanna do. It sounds like a terrible job. Um, folks, here I am. It turns out 17-year-old Jenny was a bit of a butthead. Mrs. Peel, you were right. When the students are as amazing as BCC students, being a teacher is an incredible job. But I still feel like a bit of an imposter speaking to you all at a graduation ceremony representing the faculty. You see, college was really hard for me, and I really struggled, especially during my first year. My parents hadn't gone to college. My high school wasn't very rigorous. I always coasted by and got pretty good grades without trying very hard. Uh, but college, specifically UC Berkeley, was really different. It was hard. And I was placed on academic probation my first year. And I was scared of getting kicked out of UC Berkeley. I was overwhelmed. I didn't know if I should be at a school like this. I thought maybe I wasn't good enough. And it's strange that I'm speaking to you all now on a stage at UC Berkeley because the school tried to kick me out. Um, so UC Berkeley, this is my revenge. You tried to kick me out, I'm speaking on your stage. But I really wish I would have started my college career at a school like BCC. I would have been better prepared to take on the rigors of UC Berkeley if I had been at BCC first. I see all of your BCC professors taking time to meet with you before class and after class. I see student ambassadors shepherding new students around campus. I see the hardworking staff welcoming you, giving hugs, especially Miss Allison in the library, giving advice. The BCC community is really special. Just last week, I had a student come into the library and she shared with me that she was an international student, English wasn't her first language, and she was raising five young children. At times, she didn't think she was graduating, but she thanked me and thanked everyone at BCC who helped her through the past five years. She thanked the staff, like the people from the financial aid office and the library, who helped her whenever she ran into problems. She thanked the professors who told her not to give up. She thanked the entire BCC community because she always felt supported by this community. Today, she is graduating with honors. And she was excited that I might shout out her name. So Farhanda Shabir, where are you? <laughs> Thank you for sharing your story with me. Hearing a student's story like that is what makes what I used to call a terrible job so worthwhile. So to Farhanda and the library student workers like Ryan, Jordan, and Hope, and all of the graduates today, I see your community of friends, family, coworkers, former teachers who have nurtured you, sustained you, and held you. I see all of the hard work and personal sacrifice that you have made to be here today. 
When I see you all continuing on your life and educational journeys, I feel hope. Hope that you will all someday be my children's doctors, city council members, favorite musicians or writers, maybe even their therapist. It's okay. Um, maybe one of you will be their teacher. And if any of you do become teachers, and you someday tell your students that they'd be a good teacher and that student laughs at you, you should tell them it's you know, not so bad of a job. It's not so really bad being a teacher because we faculty get to share space with students like all of you. Curious, hardworking, tenacious, and bright. It's honestly not a bad way to spend my days. So on behalf of the faculty at BCC, I wish you all the best on your life journeys. I can't wait to see where your courage and hard work take you next. Congratulations. Thank you, Jenny, for sharing your story. Now, I am pleased to introduce our President's Medallion Award recipient. The President's Medallion is awarded to one student from each college in the Peralta Community College District who meets the following criteria. They are a full-time student who is graduating and or transferring to a four-year institution or professional program school carried a minimum of 12 units per semester, and completed a minimum of 36 semester units, earned an overall GPA of 3.0 or higher, and have a record of active participation and leadership in extracurricular activities during their college attendance. I am honored to present this award to Sarah Latino. Stand here with me. Throughout her academic journey, Sarah Latino has left a significant impact through her exceptional accomplishments and unwavering dedication. Sarah served as a student trustee for the Peralta Community College District, representing the student bodies of all four colleges and actively participating in board meetings to advocate for students' needs. At Berkeley City College, she excelled as a student ambassador, guiding students through the application process and providing support for class registration, counseling, financial aid, and campus tours. Sarah has also played a crucial role as the student assistant for the Office of Student Activities and Campus Life. In her role, she coordinated events such as Club Rush to encourage student engagement with the aim to support students in finding community at Berkeley City College. She served as the communications chair for the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society Club, where she promoted community events for Mental Health Week. Through extensive involvement and unwavering dedication, Sarah has exemplified a commitment to academic excellence community service, and leadership. She has made a lasting impact on her college and community with the knowledge, skills, and experiences that will undoubtedly pave the way for a successful and purposeful future. As she graduates, Sarah embarks on the next chapter of her journey at UC Berkeley with the aim to obtain a bachelor's in cognitive science. Please join me in congratulating Sarah Latino. And now, I have the honor of introducing your keynote speaker, Esteem Brumfield. Esteem is a researcher and the research director for the Mass Incarceration Lab at Brown University. Born in prison to civil rights activists in the Bay Area, Esteem cultivated a deep sense of social responsibility, a passion for human rights, and a love for the Bay. 
His interests center on law, health, and alternatives to incarceration. Particularly, his work examines the relationship between incarceration, mental health, and public health outcomes. As a research Fulbright Fellow to South Africa, he researched the relationship between learning disability accommodations and rehabilitation within the Western Cape's prison system. Prior to conducting research, Esteem served as a public health commissioner for Alameda County and reviewed the health effects of incarceration within the county. As a student at Berkeley City College, Esteem was deeply committed to student leadership and community engagement. He served as lead student ambassador, vice president for administration for the associated students, and as a student trustee for the Peralta Community College District. Additionally, Esteemed interned for the mayor of Berkeley and coordinated education partnerships between Berkeley City College and the city of Berkeley. Today in his free time, Esteem serves as a jail and prison monitor for the Pennsylvania Prison Society, the oldest human rights organization in the United States, where he visits incarcerated individuals to assess their conditions of confinement and advocate for their health needs. Esteem proudly received his associate's degree in English from Berkeley City College. He holds a Master's of Public Health from Brown University and a Bachelor of Art from the University of California, Berkeley. Please join me in welcoming back home Esteem Brumfield. Yeah. You are so honored to have you with us. Thank you. Yeah. We love you. I love you all, thank you. My deepest appreciation to Berkeley City College, President Garcia, faculty, staff, and administrators, to the friends and families of the graduates, and of course, to the graduates themselves. Thank you for having me back home. When I first started out at BCC 15 years ago, I volunteered as a BCC ambassador right here in Zellerbach for graduation. I vividly remember it as if it were just moments ago, standing in the back in that dark row, peering out to the stage. It was enthralling. It seemed like a dream for me. I understand that probably today, not a lot of ambassadors are super stoked about volunteering. They probably want to be celebrating with their friends uh, and family on graduation day, perfectly understandable. But for me, I had never been in a university building. My parents didn't have college degrees. My brothers never finished high school. And I had never attended kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, or high school. I was functionally illiterate until the age of 23. I'd like to briefly share with you my path to BCC and the most important qualities that I learned over the eight years that I had the privilege of being here. From the time I overcame illiteracy and received my AA in English literature to transferring, the most important quality that BCC fosters in its graduates is hope. With hope, you find clarity of purpose. And with hope, you are guarded against cynicism. I was born to an incarcerated mother and a father who was in hiding from law enforcement. Due to my parents' involvement with the Black Panther Party, our family rebelled against the government. This included the education system. Our family lived in social isolation and on the run from law enforcement. Consequently, I never had an education. At age eight, my mother was imprisoned again and our family went into hiding. With our remaining money, we purchased a school bus. We converted it into a motorhome, and we evaded the law by traveling to different cities throughout California. Similar to what you would see in a tent city today, we parked our motorhome down by the train tracks near Gilman, uh, near the marina, underneath BART overpasses, with no electricity and no running water. This bus was my home until I was 21 years old. Because I was truant as a child, I wasn't allowed to tell anyone that I wasn't going to school. 
nor was I allowed out of the bus until after 3 p.m. Most people assumed that I was homeschooled, but I wasn't. While living in the bus, I would push back the window curtains and peer out to see teenagers going to and from school and engaging in society and culture in ways that I longed for. But out of fear of being judged I, and being taken by Child Protective Services, I never told anyone that I didn't have an education. No one knew that I lived in a bus. No one knew that by the time I was 14 years old, almost every member of my family had been incarcerated and through the legal system. And even fewer knew that I lacked a basic education. Growing up on the streets, I had hoped for an education. I hoped for a chance to attend a school like BCC more than I have ever hoped for anything. And it was through this experience that I learned my first lesson about hope, clarity of purpose. The reason that I wanted an education was due to a need for social change, just like many of you graduates today. We yearn for more than just an education. Although I was in a bus hidden away from the world, the social problems of the world were always present in that vehicle down by the train tracks. Poverty, pollution, policing, political neglect. I experienced the same systemic problems that millions of people face every day. I hoped and longed for an education to make a difference in society. I longed for a new legacy for my life, for my family, and for my country. And this is how clarity of purpose brought me to BCC. I no longer felt that my life could reach its potential while confined to a school bus with no education. My place of learning was in college with each of you. Due to the warrants stemming from my parents' political activism, I knew that choosing to get my identification and enroll in, in school meant that I would never be able to see my family again. A difficult choice, but at the age of 21, I enrolled in Berkeley City College and moved out of the bus the following day. My graduates, move in the direction of your hopes and dreams. Envision a better future. Nurture that vision every day and clarity of purpose will deliver you to where you need to be in life and lead you to who you will become. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, BCC fosters hope in its graduates. With hope, you find clarity of purpose, and with purpose and hope, you are guarded against cynicism. And combating cynicism is the second most important lesson I learned while here. Once you get to where you hoped you'd be in life, that doesn't mean you won't face challenges, and it doesn't mean that you can stop putting in the hard work to sustain your vision for a better future. Increasingly, it's becoming easy to become cynical in our society when we only hope and fail to match that hope, that belief, with consistent action. We can turn on the news and see countless cases of mass gun violence, climate disasters, racial, gender, and LGBTQ discrimination, but we cannot become cynical and resign from the moral obligation to better our society. We must hope and we must act. When I enrolled in BCC all those years ago, I knew that my hopes were coming true, but I mismanaged my own expectations by thinking life would finally be easy. For example, when I enrolled in my first ever US history class, I couldn't take notes because I was illiterate and I didn't know how to use punctuation or spelling. My deepest appreciation to Matt for his patience I started out to doubt my ability, or when I failed algebra six years in a row. Not knowing that I had an undiagnosed learning disability, I began to feel that I just wasn't smart enough. Or the time I withdrew my transfer application from UC Berkeley and Brown, because I didn't think that I would get accepted. Cynicism. There will be moments you must confront cynicism whether externally from others or internally from that inner voice that poses doubts. 
And in those moments, you must transcend those barriers with hope and action. Berkeley City College taught me to do this, and I am so fortunate to have learned that lesson because I reapplied to Brown and Berkeley, and getting in was the happiest moment of my life. Trust me, I have so... Trust me, I have so many W's and F's on my transcript from Peralta. <laughs> I'll honestly shock y'all invited me back. But what I came to learn is that it matters less that you dropped a course and have an F or a W on your transcript. What matters more is that you fiercely believed in your dreams. You took the course again, and you now have a degree. Hope and action brought you all here today. As you embark on the next stage of your journey, for, reflect on your time at BCC and draw strength from your journey that led you here. You have made remarkable strides. Whether it was being the first in your family to pursue higher, educa higher education or returning to college after many years. Many of you have balanced providing for your family, working multiple jobs and taking night and online classes. Some of you experienced homelessness, but were unmoved in your determination to attain your degree. And some of you may not know it yet, but the people that you meet here, your classmates, the faculty and staff, they are the greatest people that you will ever meet in your life. I speak from experience. I hope that you're proud of all that you have accomplished during your semesters at BCC. I hope that you do not forget the lessons that you learned both in the classroom and outside, nor those professors and mentors. Those lessons they imparted on you will transform your life. I know this because it transformed mine. Congratulations, class of 2023. I wish you all the best. Oh yeah, go for it. Don't have dry eyes over here. Okay, thank you for those beautiful, uplifting words and for coming back. I'm Dr. Stacy Shears and I'm pleased to serve as your Vice President of Student Services. It's my pleasure to introduce the valedictorian for the class of 2023, Parneet Burke. So you're gonna stay right here okay. while I talk about you. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Parneet is a second year business administration major at Berkeley City College. She currently is lead student ambassador at Berkeley City College, working with the student ambassador team to support her community. And outside BCC, she closely works with the Bay Area Community Resources to bring healthier food options to Oakland. She's grateful for the opportunity to attend Berkeley City College and the many pathways that it's open for her. Parneet will be transferring to the University of California, Berkeley, Haas School of Business. where she will receive her BS in Business Administration. She hopes to continue supporting community college students during her time there and in the future work in project management. Welcome, Parneet.
my turn? Okay, yeah, awesome. It's your turn, Mama. <laughs> All right, good morning, students, guests, staff, and faculty of Berkeley City College. My name is Parni, and I'm extremely honored to be named the valedictorian for Berkeley City College's class of 2023. <laughs> and I'm super grateful to have the opportunity to speak to you all today. I want to start off by congratulating each and every one of us for making it to this point. We all come from unique backgrounds and stories that have led us to community college. We face challenges and adversity in our journeys, but our perseverance is what guided us down this path and fueled our dreams. So one big round of applause to everybody here. Many of us who are entering college were anxious, scared, or unsure of what was to come next. When I began here, I didn't always feel supported by those around me from before, but the community here at BCC was there for me, building my confidence to pursue success. Being a student here is an experience that I think is absolutely like no other. Working as a student ambassador on campus, I've been blessed to meet so much of our student body and to learn from each other's life experiences and journeys. That life is more than your failures. A stumble will not throw you off of your path to success. Learning is lifelong, and there will always be room for us to continue to grow. Today is not only a milestone for many of our lives, but a stepping stone to even greater future endeavors. I want to take a moment to thank every single student leader, student worker, and campus leader who has worked to create the vibrant community that we have here at BCC. From clubs to classmates, I don't think any school compares to this one. Every day of the week, there was a new event to attend, new people to meet, and plenty of free food to accompany it. Can I have some noise for Koja Kitchen, maybe? There you go. This campus is student-led, and students are the ones who will continue to make a change wherever they go. I hope you all remember that you have the power to make the difference that you are looking for. Celebrating our accomplishments, we must also recognize that hope is what has driven us here. Hope is knowing that there is something wonderful and promising awaiting each of us. Taking the next steps, remember the support we received, the friendships we built, and the transformative power of education. Pay it all forward and hold with you the spirit of hope and resilience. And before I leave, I'd like to leave you all with one last fact. When Frank Ocean in Novocaine was talking about brain like Berkeley, he meant Berkeley City College. Congratulations. Thank you and congratulations, Paneet. My name is Kuni Hay, and I am proud to be serving as your Vice President of Instruction. Now I have the honor of introducing Salutatorian of the Class of 2023, Michelle Galiaga. Michelle is a driven and determined immigrant who came to the United States from the Philippines in 2010 with two children. Despite the challenges she faced as an immigrant with no college degree, Michelle remained resilient in her pursuit of a better life for herself and her family. After realizing that working two jobs was not enough to provide financial stability for her family, she, uh, Michelle, decided to take a leap of faith and enrolled in, guess where? Berkeley City College in 2020, spring of 2020. Despite not having been in school over 15 years, Michelle excelled in her studies and completed a social work and human services paraprofessional certificate of achievement and associate degree in liberal arts with honors. Michelle's experience working as a full-time project manager for a language service provider and a program aide for adults with developmental disabilities gave her a unique perspective on the challenges and struggles that immigrants face due to language barriers and social inequities. 
She was able to, to assist immigrants needing language support in various areas such as social services, legal system, housing rights, and labor laws. Michelle's passion for helping immigrants and her desire to learn more about the dis disadvantages that face um, immigrants led her to pursue a major in sociology at UC Berkeley. Her journey is a testament to the power of perseverance and hard work in achieving one's dreams, and she hopes to inspire others to ne never give up on their aspirations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So let's try this. Good morning, fellow graduates, esteemed, esteemed faculty, family, and friends. My name is Michelle, and I'm honored to welcome you all to this momentous occasion, our graduation. Today, as I stand before you, I can't help but feel a sense of disbelief, overwhelming gratitude, and hope for the future ahead of us. As unique as each of our journeys in community college has been, I am sure we all experience the same moments of fear, frustration, and defeat, but also joy, excitement, and triumph. One of the highlights of my college experience is realizing that age is not a barrier to novel experiences, and that one is never too old to learn, grow, and hope for new beginnings. Three years ago, I did not have the same outlook. I was a lost middle-aged woman with no career prospects, no college degree, and no hope for a better life. When I moved to America in 2010, I hoped to build a better life for myself and my two children and my new family. I believed in the American dream that everyone talks about, that as long as you work hard, you will succeed in this country and you will live a comfortable life. But after Many years of working hard at two jobs, 60 hours a week while raising two children, I realized that American dream wasn't true. <laughs> I was stuck in dead-end jobs, struggling to make ends meet, and feeling like I failed my children, my family, and myself. Knowing that I could not continue feeling like a hopeless loser, I enrolled in Berkeley City College for my 50th birthday. <laughs> Thank you. In the, in the spring of 2020, my father always said, Michelle, whenever you feel lost, go back to school because learning is a door to endless possibilities. So even though I was never a good student in high school and I hadn't been in college for over 15 years, I scheduled an advising appointment with Skylar Barton. <laughs> and I told him, okay, Skylar, let's do this. <laughs> Even if I am older than all of my professors, which was true in most cases. <laughs> um, and even if I made a fool out of myself, I knew that the worst thing that could happen is that I fail. And at that point, I was a veteran at failing. So I was no longer afraid of failure. I wanted to learn, and I desperately wanted to accomplish something, anything. And it was one of the best decisions I made for myself. As a full-time student in Berkeley City College, juggling two jobs while being a mom to two high school students, it was challenging to say the least, it was painful. <laughs> for five semesters, I slept for only four hours at best studying, doing homework, and writing papers, even on weekends and holidays. But it was also exciting, and it was fun. I met many wonderful and inspiring professors and classmates who challenged my old beliefs and my outdated mindset and opened my eyes to new perspectives. 
I also found community among my fellow student parents who, like me, were looking to change their life paths and start anew. And after three years of hard work, I completed a social work and human services paraprofessional certificate of achievement, an associate's degree in liberal arts, um, and will attend UC Berkeley this fall as a transfer student majoring in sociology. These accomplishments are more than just an education to me. They have given me a new life, a rebirth. The last three years have shown me what I can do and made me believe in myself again. I am proud of who I am and what I have achieved, and I am grateful for the support and encouragement of my family, my husband especially, my children, my professors, and my classmates. I know that my journey is not unique, there are many people out there who, like me, are struggling to make ends meet, to provide for their families, and to pursue their dreams. And to those, I want to say this, it's never too late to start over. Age is just a number. <laughs> Failure is just an opportunity to grow. No matter your circumstances, hope is always behind that door of possibilities. So open that door. So fellow graduates, we have accomplished something great today. We have overcome obstacles and challenges and shown that hard work and dedication can lead to new beginnings. Undoubtedly, we will continue to have many moments of triumph and defeat. But whatever we do, we always remember to look forward to the future with determination and hope. Again, thank you to our mentors, families, and friends for your unwavering support. And to my fellow graduates, I am honored to have shared these couples of years with you. Congratulations. On behalf of the faculty and staff at Berkeley City College, it gives us great pleasure to present to you all the candidates for associate degrees and certificates. And we ask that you welcome them into the company of college graduates. By the authority vested in me, by the Peralta Community College District Board of Trustees and the Board of Governors of the State of California, I confer upon you the degrees of Associate in Arts, Associate in Science, Associate Degrees for Transfer, Certificates of Achievement, Certificates of Com Competency, Certificates of Completion, and Certificate of Proficiency. Now, fellow graduates, please move your tassel from the right to the left. Congratulations.